Words or music? Uh, <coughs> the, wor the words and the music kind of um, come together on their own and then eventually join up at some point. But it's, uh, it's usually the music that will solidify and hone the idea that becomes the song. So, uh, most of the time I'm sort of keeping notes of, for lyrics and possible lyrics, titles, stuff like that. But they're kind of waiting the right piece of music. So it's, it, it tends to be the music that, uh, that, that fixes it. I mean, that, that's the essence of a song in a way. It can, uh, it can make the most banal language sound the most fantastic thing you've heard. Sure. I don't know whether you ever go home. Do you go home and listen to music? Uh, very rarely these days. Right. Well, in the days that you did, who, who might you go home and stick on the stereo? Well, what year? Let's say 1985. Oh, God, that was a difficult year. Um, I think, I, OK, I think a record I liked then was, oh, Christ, what a memory test now. Um, Boys of Summer. Oh, right, Don Henley. That's him, yeah. Great so lyric. I quite like that. I, Great quite, lyric, I did quite like that. But a, I mean, but a very, very accessible song. Uh, what year did Graceland come out? Similar, I'd have thought. 80, 86. 85, 86. Well, he's, um, just, he's just going to do a tour to celebrate. Tour. Yeah. But that was, a, that was a fantastic album. Well, and I still think it was a fantastic album. Uh, so I would certainly be listening to those. I bet I was listening to a bit of Donna Summer around then. Um, but a funny time. <laughs> for you personally? Or for for me personally. Why is it a funny time? Um, well, everything had gone wrong in life at that point, really. And, uh, everything? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, I'd even take my eye off the government and they were off to, up to other stuff. Um, well, they saw you weren't looking. Uh, yeah, I was just a, it was a complete low point in my life at that point. <clears throat> After my solo album and then uh, I, I had a marriage that went uh, So, it wasn't that great then. Hello Mr. Curtis's, um, well, to uh, because the idea of, the idea of suicide has always, always been an important one to me ever since I was a, was a young man. Um, so, yeah, so I finally decided I'd kind of try and put a bit of that into a song. Mm -hmm. uh, it, <coughs> that song actually was from about 10 years ago. Uh, I, I uh, sketched that one out. And that was actually at a time when, in a way, I put the idea of suicide, and I'd better just explain, I've never actually tried to top myself or anything. I've made preparations, but I've never actually tried to do it. Yeah, it's good news. Um, it's a good excuse. Good news, it's good news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but life isn't always good news. But at this point in my life, as I say about 10 years ago, uh, I, I kind of felt I'd put that behind me. And so hence the, the last verse of that says, well, no, I don't think I'm going to die like... Uh, Ian Curtis or Kurt Cobain, I think I'm going to die like a king, like Elvis, have a heart attack on the toilet. Um, but actually, my, uh, a guy I kind of thought of as my mentor in Manchester when I, uh, when I was uh, at college in Bolton, uh, one of my philosophy lecturers, that's actually how he died in 2004. On the toilet? He had a heart attack, yes. On the toilet? Yeah, yeah. How common is dying on the toilet? Well, apparently, uh, I have a friend of mine who works with the elderly, and she says it's not at all uncommon because people start to feel a little unwell, they disappear off into the toilet, and then yeah. it gets them. So, what's the story behind? Oh, of course, Howard, in brackets, 1979. 1979. Yeah. Um, that's. Uh, I came across. Um, this booklet called 30 Lyrics 
that we put out in 1979. It was my first 30 lyrics. I'd done 30 lyrics, so hey, that amounts to a, an epic work. 30 lyrics, A4, just black and white, few photographs. And I'd written this introduction. First, you turn over the first page, there's this introduction, and it starts, I demand special consideration as the most human. And it sort of goes on in a similar vein. And uh, I read it and just went, wow, wow, you were really going for that, weren't you, lad, back then? And, and so when the, the, Dave did the fundamentals of that music, so when, when Dave sort of sent me this track, I sort of think about this, reading this, and could I work it, maybe work it in? It sounded like uh, a mostly spoken word kind of thing would, would suit the music and so this introduction I just thought oh, maybe I could use that and kind of uh, talk to myself a little bit. So that's why it's 1979. Uh, we have our best phrases. If you met 1979's Harry <laughs> so what do you think you think of him? <laughs> um, I'd probably say give yourself a bit of a break. Uh, don't be so hard on yourself, um, and think about smiling in one or two photographs. That's what I, that, that's what always gets me when I look back is the kind of total po-facedness, mostly 99% po-facedness. But people, well, look at, I mean, people who were people who were in the corner of music that I was in. Um, he generally didn't, I would say. Because um, people thought you less that, uh, That's what was so great about the Lust for Life sleeve. You know, Iggy, Iggy Pop with this big cheesy grin on his face. Yeah. For, for the time, as I say, when everybody else was doing, uh, doing gravely serious. Uh, but that's all very well. You, you know, you are kind of what you are at a certain time, aren't you? Um, You're a very different person now, do you say? I think I am, yeah, yeah. A lot happier person. A lot happier? Mm. What's made you a lot happier? Uh, <laughs> adventures in life, um, realising my limitations. <clears throat> that's a, that, that's been a very, it's a very big thing for me.